We're looking at, um, well, I don't know if I can see them. You can look for something called Bailey's Beads, which is shafts of sunlight shining through the valleys of the moon. Let me see if I can. Yeah, no, I, don't think, I don't think you have any, Sal. So. But um, if they were there, it might be that left-hand corner there. They would probably, this is, and they kind of pop on and off um, and don't last very long. Let me say something about this one, Sal. This is, this, this is, uh, this was one of these eclipses where, where the totality maybe only lasted 30 seconds or so, and the moon barely covers the sun, so you get this entire chromosphere all around. Wow. You should not expect that in, in this case. Yeah, You'll right. see the chromosphere in the beginning, uh, right after the diamond ring, and you'll see it at the end when the second diamond ring comes, but you will not see it during totality. During totality, this time around, essentially it will be totally black, except for some of these prominences, these sun flares that, that may stick out. Ah. The, the disc will be totally black. You'll see a beautiful, you'll see a corona of some kind coming out, but you won't, you won't see, the, the chromosphere will not be there. That's the, that's where the short eclipses are the payoff. But so that was the short eclipse. Yeah, this was, was so this was probably one that was only like 30 seconds okay. or so. Mm -hmm. Now, what is the white around That's it? That's a chromosphere of the sun. Okay. Yeah, this is uh, done by a composite. Uh, uh, you're able to see this, especially through binoculars, but it's pretty hard for uh, your camera to photograph this. Uh -huh. But this is what's going on, and this, this pearly area, uh, enlarged area is called the, uh, uh, let's see, chromosphere, no, that's, that's the lower part, this corona, and it, it uh, elongates, the streamers may change shape uh, during totality, and it's certainly something to uh, be looking for. There is something that happens that we could mention here, mm -hmm. that just as the diamond ring disappears, um, Whenever you shine a light around a, a spherical object or through a slit, um, like the Michelson-Morley experiments, you will end up seeing inter diffraction lines. The light will automatically be diffraction. Mm -hmm. Or if you've got a telescope and you look at a star, you can see the star's got rings around it, you know, when you, okay, those are diffraction rings. Well, you have the same thing here, and if you set up for it, what happens is that just as the sun disappears, there's a, just a moment where you get a whole series of diffraction rings that come by you at a thousand miles an hour, okay? And if you have a large white surface, which we did, remember when you were with us, we're in Idaho, we prepared a board for this, laid it out there, and I took a picture, I actually got it on the cell phone. Did and, you? And as it came through, you could see the whole board going, <laughs> just right, you know, as it was those during, lines. During Organized trips, there's usually you know people that look for things. These are called shadow bands. Yeah. And people will be yeah. yelling, shadow bands, shadow bands. Yeah. Mm -hmm. no. And I saw very clearly one time in Africa, Sally was standing right next to me. She couldn't see it. Eventually. Don't you so. see it? They, they look like waves yeah. in the water, kind yeah. of. Yeah. And they come and, by very rapidly. Uh, and you can see them on a bus or a car, like if there's a car surface, especially a white surface there, okay? That's what, and you catch them out of the corner of your eye better than looking at them, but you'll see it, you know, you'll see, the, see it light and dark as they go by. I've, I've only seen them once, and we've done 12 of these things. <laughs> Sally's never seen them. Oh, yeah, I did see one. Did you see it one time? Oh, okay. And then, and then pe people taking videos of them. Uh -huh. Yeah. And I can't see them in the video. Wow. Uh -huh. it, they're just, they're I kind actually, of elusive. I have to find that. I've got a video of it in my, you know, we actually, we're taking the, the picture and then we caught it. Uh, I'd like to see it. Be, yeah. 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 All this excitement. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it, it no, is, is exciting, isn't it? No. No, that's, that's when, um, I'll talk a little bit about it. Uh, as we get on, but there are computer programs that will uh, automatically take uh, images uh, throughout partial, well, mostly totality, and but then you have to take each of these, you know, and combine them in Photoshop. So that's that's what this process. So that's a stacked is. image. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. These are probably 10, 15 pictures. Oh, more yeah. than that. Probably. Oh, more than that. Yeah. A bunch of them. 
but they're, you know, they're actually gorgeous. Uh -huh. I have resources there for uh, where to get some of those computer programs if you, if you want to try your hand at that. But, if, you know, another thought, uh, heretical as it might be, is if this is your first eclipse, you might just uh, consider watching it just and not worrying it. about uh -huh. photographing it. Yeah. Uh, bring some binoculars along uh, to, to see the... Um, everything because it is fairly s a small image in the sky and the binoculars will help you focus in on on some of these phenomena uh the bailey's beads and the flares and this and that. wide binoculars you don't need power you know hmm. seven by 35s yeah. yeah and if you have sta uh, image stabilized binoculars of course that's the, that's, that's the way to go that's what right. i do yeah, you want to image stabilized. You want to look through us yeah. image stabilized. I don't take any pictures anymore. I used to, and then. But if you're I on a tripod, wasted sure. too much time taking pictures. If you're on a tripod, see. you wouldn't need yeah. image stabilization. I want to see the no. pictures. I see no. the pros that put them together. Right, right. right. If you're hand holding that, well, uh, I'll let that pros like, like Sally take pictures. That that, that's a nice <laughs> way to go. I'll let pros <laughs> like her take pictures. <laughs> Yeah, I, I can enjoy it knowing Sally is photographing it for me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, one of the, uh, if you do decide to photograph, and you know, why, you know, why not? As long as you're not spending a lot of time messing with it. Um, and again, uh, the, the key word to photographing, I believe, is called bracket. Bracketing, bracketing, bracketing. Um, so my camera will, will take seven images at different f-stops. Uh, or you know times and um, wow. you know some of those will be perfect and some of those you know they're just throwaway ones but you can go from and I yeah, think I've got some, some examples yeah, there of, of uh, yeah, even with what business. a good places to start <laughs> might be and uh, and that that takes a lot of pressure off trying to get the exact thing and then not only getting the exact uh, f-stop but uh, or uh, the sequence of exposures, but, um, oh, yeah, you don't want to spend all your time changing your settings, so the bracketing will help you do that, and, you know, you've got four minutes in there, or three minutes in there, and you can uh, check and see if how it's doing, and maybe at that point you can do some adjustments, but you don't want to spend all your time messing with your camera and, and miss the whole eclipse. Yeah. So, so, um, yeah, we've got the eclipse exposure table on your handout. Use that as a starting point. And maybe uh, have one sequence of your exposure from one one thousandth of a second, maybe up to one second or two seconds. And it helps to practice this ahead of time. Um, That's what I was going to ask, so you can put the filters on and just shoot the sun. Yeah, just shoot, shoot the sun, absolutely. And actually, um, each eclipse is, is different. The corona's brightness, brightness varies, and uh, depending on whether you have a haze or a thin cloud cover, you may need a little more exposure time. But um, you'll definitely need to photograph with a tripod and cable release. Um, and of course, if, uh, if anybody is around you with a point and shoot, tell them to turn their flash off uh, mm. because that when it's, it's not going to help, it doesn't go out that far. <laughs> the, sun <laughs> is, two, the sun is too bright and it's also too far too away. Too far away. Uh -huh. And it, it can uh, destroy your night adapted vision. It could be as you, you went along, your eyes became more and more sensitive, and then this flash goes off right next to you or something like that, and it's very annoying. So if you've got somebody who says, well, I don't really know how to turn my flash off, you know, and people have these point and shoots and they don't Smashed have any camera. idea how yeah. to turn it off. Mm. I always, my, my go-to is to tell them to put it on that little mountain, you know, on the landscape, uh -huh. because the camera knows that uh, the flash isn't going to light up the mountain um, and it won't go. So that's a quick and dirty way Good of idea. Open your neighbor <laughs> without saying, well, do you have your, do you, you know, do you have your, uh, manual with you, and we can look it up, and I can help you turn it up. No, no, no. Put it on that little bit. <laughs> uh, most people use cell phones these days. Anyway. Yeah, well. Let's all see that. Interesting. So, um, of course, be sure you have fresh batteries, and your memory card's got plenty of space on it. Um, oh, okay. Let's see. There we go. 
Uh, so this shows you, it's a little, a little small, maybe a little hard to see, but uh, how big the uh, sun is going to be, or the, uh, depending on how big your camera lens is. What are, what are the different? Uh... So we've got 200 millimeters, the first one on the top, up, upper left, and then 400 millimeters, 500 millimeters. The second row is 100, 150, not 100, 1,000, 1,050, and 2,000. So I, I have a, my biggest at this point is uh, 500 millimeters. Wow. And then you can always crop in if you've got a good sharp image. Yeah, if, I, if you have lots of pixels, yeah. you, you, you yeah. can do that. Also be advised that the sun is moving. Mm -hmm. I mean, the shadow is moving, the whole thing is moving. So uh, <clears throat> if, if you're there at the 2,000th level, whatever that last one is, you, know, you, you, you almost have to have a tracking a tracking camera. Mm. For the smaller ones, you can you can orient your camera so that maybe just a little tweak of of, of, of an adjustment on on your uh, whatever gadget you have on there, you you can you know move move it over just a little bit and midstream. But yeah, you, you usually don't bother, right, Sal? You oh know? yeah, I, I try and keep an eye because it can move quite a bit. Yeah. So. Do you use a converter, um, one quarter? Uh, no, um, I haven't used, I haven't done that. I, it would probably work okay. Because, you know, you want to get it uh, in focus before anything starts, you know, so you, you line up, uh, uh, put your filter on, uh, focus on the sun, get it nice and sharp, and then because your camera is going up, and especially if you have a large lens, it can tend to slide back down or maybe get bumped and get out of focus. So it recommends that you tape that and it's where it is, you know. And, uh, and then when you take uh, the solar filter off, make sure you haven't tapped it somehow or changed, changed the focus. Um, so be checking on that to make sure it's really still focused. And you use the manual focus. Um, so, so you're shooting it with a filter up until the full eclipse, and then mm -hmm. you're taking your filter off and shooting mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. How bad, how much does that change your exposure at that point? Well, um, that's when you start the bracketing, um, and that okay. covers you. Yeah, it's going to change some, okay. certainly. That, that, last, that last little <clears throat> bit, uh, you, you know, of partiality, you're not getting a lot of light through. But, yeah. um, that makes sense. Okay. So these, these uh, uh, the table here is for when it's totality. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, I think, is that true? I, I haven't got one in front of me. Yeah, I think those that are from the different phenomena during totality. So, um, doesn't, like you said, practice before the eclipse. Um, you can focus, you know, put your filter on and focus on the sun. Uh, you get give you some idea how much it's going to fill up your camera frame. And the full moon is about as bright as the sun's inner corona. Uh, you could even practice on that. Um, we talked about the sun moving. Okay, and we talk about some of these beautiful images. This is by photographer Fred Espinek. Yeah. Um, this is a computer controlled photograph photograph and um, combined with the layers combined in Photoshop. Hmm. So, and on your handout, there are programs there that you can find if you want to look into that. Um, yeah, I think one Eclipse, Eclipse Orchestrator seems to be a very favorite one hmm. among okay. guys that I've seen shooting. And, you know, it, you tell it where it is and it knows when the Eclipse starts and what pictures to take when. It's uh, pretty amazing. Is that on my list? Yes, I believe okay. it is. <laughs> so, so AI apps now, right? Yeah. If you're going to do the um, computer automatically controlling your camera, you need, of course, um, mm -hmm. a DSLR, a laptop, a cable to connect the two, and the software to control the <coughs> setup. So, and again, this would be something you'd want to practice ahead of time to make sure everything's oh, working yeah. for you. 
So you're <coughs> connecting your camera to the computer and everything. Mm -hmm. So sometimes the nighttime photography, um, many programs are designed for nighttime photography, mm -hmm. astrophotography, such as Maxim DL and Images Plus, and they can be used to control the camera during the eclipse. Uh, so this is another, another way to go to it. Um, Photometrix Pro can be used to create the HDR composite, but um, you can get some some pretty good pictures just by bracketing. Oh, this, I think one of mine, a little bit of cloud, I think, going on there. Is that your photo there? Yeah. Uh huh. <clears throat> yeah, that's one of mine. Wow, yeah. cool. Very nice. Yeah, yeah, the way you caught those solar flares coming around the moon yeah, is awesome. Cool. Yeah. Now that one's not mine. But that's, <laughs> that's a flare composite. Yeah. It? Yeah. And that one's not mine. Oh. Uh, but it's cool. you really caught that inner corona really nice. Yeah. Is that yours? There? Yeah. That's that's See, there's a lot of detail in there. In your photo. Thanks. And there's the diamond ring, the second wow. diamond ring. Uh -huh. look, look at the More detail, though, in the corona. That's uh, when, yeah. with your photos, I was amazed. Uh -huh. so here we mm. have another diamond ring. Typically, uh -huh. the diamond rings um, will start uh, somewhere around. <laughs> I guess sometimes you can figure out where it's going to start, but then it, it oftentimes goes out opposite. So you can well, kind of. Well, if, if, uh, if you're exactly on the center line, and then the, di the diamond ring will be at, at 100, and, you know, they'd be 180 degrees out. But if you're at the edge, uh, then the diamond ring may start here and come back out here because you're at the, uh, at the edge. And of course, if you're at the very edge, then you just get one little smidgen right there. So we noticed that it became pretty obvious uh, one time when we were chasing a hole with with, an, with a cruise ship to look for an opening in the sky, and we found one, but it was not on the center line anymore. And immediately you could notice that the, the diamond ring were not exactly opposite. Yeah. Uh -huh. So, yeah. Okay. So there's the diamond ring. So when, what was the one like, Peter, where you were in the airplane over Antarctica? Uh, well. <laughs> <laughs> what, why don't you guys have this discussion after? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Good idea. I'm okay. Done. I'm almost done. Uh, but Poor Sally. The last time I, I gave this uh, presentation, someone suggested I show a few uh, photos from places we've been while we've seen the eclipse. So I throw a few of those in. Oh, there's the last little bit. Oh. Partial. Uh, um, more partial. Oh. Okay, there we are. So uh, this is actually from uh, either Greece or the Cape Verde Islands. I can't remember. <laughs> trouble with it. So many places. But this is a Cape Verde Island. Uh, and this is an interesting place. Um, it's off the western coast of Africa and is a variety of islands. Uh, and they're all somewhat different. So this is the green one, and this is the volcanic one, mm. which occasionally explodes. Um, here, some kids here. Fun. Now everybody has cell phones and they're not impressed with seeing their picture on a, on a uh, uh -huh. <laughs> camera lens. In the old days. Uh -huh. Here we are in Iceland. Wow, this is cool. Reykjavik. It's beautiful, isn't it? And here? some Iceland uh, waterfalls. That's Niagara? No, that's, no, that's Iceland. Oh. Yeah, they have Icelandic wow. ponies. Is that the pony? Aren't they cute? Ponies? And they oh. call them horses, I guess. I don't know. Or maybe they look yeah, like they they're so furry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. And the interesting the guy on the left with the blue eyes. Uh huh. Wow, really that's cool. amazing. I think this was a little museum that showed us how people used to live uh, out in the wilderness. And in the old days, these would, I guess, be, you know, half of, half of the buildings were underground. Wow. And cool. We oh, look at lucky that. To get, uh, Is that in Iceland? Yeah. We uh -huh. were lucky to get some. Awesome. I'd like to see an aurora. Were they underground? Were those the sleeping quarters? Well, they were. Um, 
I want to go I to think, small barn, so we do that yeah. in the fall or spring. I don't know. I guess it just a few feet underground. I mean, it wasn't the whole thing. But they, as you can kind of see, they cover them with the... So that house is basically underground? Yeah. Well, half part of it was. Uh-huh. Yeah, I think. Those are the sod roof ones? Yeah, the sod roof ones. This, they, they don't <coughs> use them anymore. Trilogue. This was, you know, a couple of years ago, yeah. whatever. They were. So here, here we nice. see some yeah, stars, nice. too. Nice yeah. Aurora. Nice, yeah. nice. Wow. Uh, Fumaroles. Thermal it's, it's vents. A very mm -hmm. active thermal country. So there's always something bubbling up somewhere. Everybody gets free hot water. Uh -huh. <laughs> that person get out there. Oh, she, she just walked out. Usually this, this was a, on a tour, and this gal was always sort of getting in my photograph. But actually, I liked it this time because she gave us a make it focal for you. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, OK, that, that works. Yeah, I like that. But come on. Uh, <laughs> anyway, here we are. We're on a, a boat going by uh, uh, off Papua New Guinea. Um, a uh, active volcano. Wow, um, cool. So, and we're, we stopped on this trip. It's a pretty amazing trip. <clears throat> Went around and landed in some of the primitive villages, and they're, they're welcoming us into the village with wow. kind of a parade, basically, until they went in first. Um, we were not allowed into the village, oh. so this was part of their welcome, course, welcoming tradition. Is that kind of like a powwow or something, or? Um, no, the they, native dance, native the native festivals. dancers and uh -huh. the, the big uh, masks. Uh huh. And, and sure, uh, but different. Yeah. Yeah. Just so here, here he, they were a group of them greeted uh, the boat at one of our stops too. I love, I love the hat. So. Yeah, that is pretty amazing. Nice. <laughs> And here we are in Bali, very uh -huh. um, ornate country, and even their their statues wow. um, are modest. I think wow. that's why the little scripts around there. I don't know. Isn't that amazing? Uh, we are Sally's in pets. Komodo. <laughs> guys are hanging Where around. Uh, in the, and the Komo these are Komodo dragons on Komodo Island, and which is where in Indonesia or Malaysia? Indonesia. Indonesia. So some other um, Indonesian dances. And now, are those Komodos as big as you are? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, they're, they're, yeah, yeah. They, they're they the be, of, usually the length of this uh, car here. Uh, not not all of them. I mean, those are the really big ones. But, mm -hmm. yeah. mm. And um, I saw a documentary where they took down a water buffalo. Wow. wow. Yeah. And they're interesting. Mm -hmm. They'll attack Come something up. and bite them, uh, and then the, the animal will get away because they aren't totally killed, but the, the, their saliva has such toxins in them that within a day or two the animal They'll will die. be dead and they can smell their way to them. Wow. And then they eat them. So, wow. So here we are back in Indonesia and um, the little lady on the right, you know, you, you see what's all this white stuff and that's their sunscreen. So huh. the, the women are still trying to... Huh. Are they trying them. not to get dark? Well, they're, yeah, they're trying not to get sunburned, no. sunburned or oh. cancer, I guess, oh. whatever. So. But they're there with, with their poles, and they were demonstrating um, working on uh, the grain there. Oh. Turning it into flour, I guess. We have a market. It's kind of cool. Always, always fun. Huh. Oops. Did those yeah. women catch the fish? Uh, probably not. Probably oh. her family did. Yeah. The man probably and dancing, you know, we had the dancing troupe. Oh, beautiful. Young pretty. Women. And then the local women made up this amazing <coughs> feast for us. Wow. All this food. Were you on a group tour? At this yeah. Point? Yeah. This was it was a hundred uh, people boat. Mm -hmm. so. Oh. Now, how was that food? Pretty good. That was good. Yeah. Uh huh. And these these girls asked me to take a picture of their grandma. Mm. So, with them. Mm -hmm. Oh, here we are. I think here we are in um, Malaysia, perhaps, and, and a, there's sort of a ceremonial battle going on. They called for a uh, volunteer from the tour group, and of course, Pete is always <laughs> the first to volunteer for anything. So he gets to battle this man, uh -huh. and uh, they're doing pretend uh, whacking away at each other. Uh -huh. So then Pete figures, well, I guess I'm supposed to get down on the ground now, too, so he does. <laughs> <laughs> the locals got a big kick out of it. So, uh, of course, we all did. So, 
So, oh, uh, here we are, meeting, me, pe meeting the mo locals. Wow. In Antarctica, and the emperor picked them all. Isn't that awesome? So, yeah, now, Peter, it looks like you have a pretty big hat on. Well, it's a ball cap. It, it can get cold there, oh, actually. Right. It, yeah, it, yeah. It, it was not as cold as, as, as I look, because uh, it just wasn't. But if you sit around with the, with the penguins, even, I think the temperature was only in the 20s, maybe. Oh. And, but you sit there for an hour, yeah. you get cold. Yeah. The, you know, so you, you yeah. bundle up. Right. Yeah. It was not particularly cold. Uh -huh. We're, we had hoped that there would a, a storm would come through, and a storm did come through, but it was relatively warm. And during a storm, the, the penguins will cuddle. They all go together into a, and and that apparently is a real, a real treat to see. They, uh -huh. they they make all kinds of noises together. And, uh -huh. Now, do they just come up right up to you there? Or? That's, they come up. Yeah, we were not allowed to get any closer than what maybe fifteen feet. Fifteen feet. But they would they would be two feet away from me. They, uh, you know, they could they, approach. They you. didn't read. They didn't get the memo. So don't, <laughs> don't get close to those people. So they, and they're very curious, and, and they will. They'll just stand there for a long time. They're not like they come up and then leave. Uh -huh. They'll come there. They'll they'll stay there for a while. They don't have a lot to do, you know. <laughs> they, yeah. They're not. Well, hey, that bright jacket, oh, right? It attracts them. I assume you're not allowed to feed them or anything. Oh my gosh, oh, no. No, 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 and you can't touch them. Now they, what do they eat? Fish and stuff, I guess they. Yeah, oh, yeah they, they, well, the, the, the adults will will walk to the uh, coastline, which is at this point was about 25 miles away, wow. and fish, and then you know they store the fish, probably, uh, you know, probably uh, digest it somewhat, and they come back and then they, you know, basically regurgitate it with their chicks' mouths, and that's how the chicks um, are fed. So the chicks are hanging around all day long, waiting for mom or dad to come back, and um, I've got, I do have a couple of pictures back here of, of um, a penguin family, and there's one with three chicks. Um, Penguins only have one chick, only one egg, but these other two joined uh, in, hoping mom would feed them too, would be mistaken, uh, think they were maybe one of hers, and, and, uh, but it didn't work, so uh -huh. they took off. But it made a good photograph, so uh -huh. I appreciate it. So, it's cute. Cool. Sad. Okay, do we have any questions? Okay, now we can talk. Now uh -huh. can okay. Tell us about the. Well, we have wine and we have food. Thank you, Sally.